Hello, my name is Morgan Lee. I'm a second year PhD student in the Computer Science Department here at WPI, and I do research in an educational technology lab, uh, more specifically focused on educational technology and reinforcement learning for education. So uh, this project was about uh, contextual banded algorithms and supplying different features to those banded algorithms to see if we get better recommendations. So I'm gonna break down those terms for you. So a contextual banded algorithm uh, imagine you are in a casino. There are three slot machines right in front of you. You can pull the arm on each one, and each has a different chance of giving you the jackpot. Uh, how do you decide which slot machine to go for? The general idea is you pull each slot machine arm a predetermined number of times to figure out which one is more likely to give you the jackpot, and then you go with that one. Um, that is the multi-armed bandit problem in reinforcement learning. Uh, the one thing that's different with what we're doing is uh, we use contextual bandits, which uh, that's like if for a, each slot machine, uh, it might have a different distribution if uh, a man or a woman pulls the thing or if um, you pull it at a certain time of day. So you take in context of the situation and factor that in when you're, you're calculating rewards. So what I did with this project um, so in assessments, there are uh, assessments is a free online educational platform used by middle school math students across the country, and uh, most problems in assessments have at least two uh, educational supports. So hints or explanations that a student can request at any time to get instruction. So it stands to reason that some of those hints and explanations might be better for some students than others. Some students might need things to be explained very abstractly. Some students might need problems to be broken down into parts. Um, so how do we figure out which hints to give to which students? The answer is reinforcement learning. Putting it back in the jackpot example for a second, the different arms that we can pull are different hints or explanations that we can give to the student. And what we want to do is we want to give students the hints and explanations that are more likely to, to have the student learn. Uh, and we measure that by whether or not the student looks at a hint and then gets the next problem in whatever homework assignment they're doing correct. So um, all of this is work that uh, has been done in assessments previously. Um, and the, the, the context that this bandit is taking in is a bunch of computed averages that, that we compute uh, across the entire assessments database. So these can be features at the user level, like uh, a user average correctness, how likely is this particular student to get a problem correct on the first try. Uh, they can be problem level features or like tutor strategy level features. So um, uh, I wanna focus some more specifically on those features and, and what they're trying to approximate in, in our models. So um, think, about that user average correctness for a second. That, in our model, is kind of a stand-in for prior knowledge, right? That number is telling the model how likely a student is to, to know something, right? It's, it's how much a student generally knows. But if a student is doing the first few problems on a new skill, like say the, the student is learning something for the first time, that number is going to be somewhat misleading, right? Because they they don't know the, the thing that they're trying to learn. Um, so using user average correctness as a feature in that particular case, it's, it's a messy approximation at best. Uh, this is where other models from the educational data mining community come in. And the one that we used for this project specifically is called Bayesian knowledge tracing. Um, BKT uh, is a machine learning model that predicts based on a sequence of correct and incorrect answers whether or not the student will get the next problem of a particular skill correct. So we want to try um, giving measurements from BKT, predictions from BKT, as a feature into this reinforcement learning model. Now the problem is doing that on a system that is live takes a lot of work and a lot of energy for a benefit that isn't necessarily there. So we wanted to see if the idea had promise. Uh, we did a simulation based off of data that was collected in assessments. Because sometimes if a student uh, is, sometimes students receive hints at random, right? If there are two or three supports for a particular problem, students might get one 
that was randomly assigned to them. Uh, so what we did was we grabbed all of the examples of a student getting a random student support from the past two years, and we used that as the base uh, data set to simulate our, our Banda agents doing a series of recommendations, right? And we tried that with three different feature spaces. One, uh, just a, a random model to use as a baseline to compare things to. One, which was just the, the base model with the standard feature space that I described before. And one, using a BKT prediction instead of that user average correctness feature. And we found that in simulation, uh, the BKT models, the, the, the models with BKT as a feature, tended to outperform the models that did not. Um, this figure here is a bit misleading. The, uh, for each feature space, we did five simulations, and each simulation was one million recommendations each. Uh, this figure is just the confidence intervals of those of the averages of those simulations. But if you look at the, the, the difference between the, the means, uh, our findings were significant. We, we did find that, at least in simulation, uh, supplying better features, better features here meaning a feature that is more theoretically supported than just an average, uh, the recommendations that the models give tend to be better. Uh, we're looking to do an empirical study of something like this very soon.